ask you a question? Have you ever seen that movie Return of the Living Dead? Yeah, where the corpses come back to life and start eating people's brains. Did you know that movie was based on a true case? I've never been more serious in my life. But you see, they changed it all around. What really happened was the U.S. Army was developing some kind of chemical called 245 Retrovoxin. It was supposed to give people a tingly sensation in the brain to relax them. But it ended up bringing corpses back to life. It was a big cover-up. They contained the contaminated corpses, but through some military screw-up, they shipped one of the canisters here. I want to see it. It's just the skull. There's more in the basement. But yeah, can you believe it? This thing was once alive and eating people's brains. Pretty amazing. Leak. Oh, I don't know. This thing was made by the Army Corps of Engineers. sense that um, 
um, he's kind of like a father figure, but he's also a boss, so, and he's, he's not a bad guy, but sometimes he has to do things that are, um, you know, not the right thing to do, but eventually, he always does the right thing, I guess. This is Frank, um, he works at the warehouse, also an older gentleman, and he's, it seems like he's been working there for quite a long time, and he has a good relationship with Bert. And this is Freddy. Um, he's a teenager, maybe 18 or 19, and he just got hired. Uh, this is his first day working at the warehouse. And so they're, um, Frank is showing him around, teaching him how to do the job. And Bert is just on his way out because it's 5 30, you know, the day's done. And it's, uh, he's out for the weekend because it's a July 4th, a long weekend. And he's like, okay, see you guys. And he says, and no matter what happens, don't name it after me. Uh, it's kind of a joke. Well, it is a joke. So now this panel here. Um, Frank is showing Freddy around the warehouse. And there's a lot of interesting things. There's this crate, and they're putting, and there's like this skeleton here, and a whole bunch of skeletons, and they put them in the crate. There's all like styrofoam in there got like medical charts on the wall and then he got this shelf there is a um case of butterflies little butterflies in a um display case and then there is um there's the weirdest thing a split dog so it's an actual it's supposed to be a dead dog but it's split down the middle so that you can see um its internal organs and i guess it's used for veterinary school and stuff like that and then a bedpan for some reason. Um, they mentioned that. And then uh, one part Frank is like, we got some wheelchairs over here. And Freddy's like, wow, that's great. He seems so impressed by wheelchairs. I don't know, it's kind of weird. But And then finally he shows him this um, door here. It's basically the door to a freezer. And inside the freezer is a cadaver. And it's hanging off these hooks. And uh, it's like has this plastic bag over it. And Freddy's like, whoa. And uh, Frank says they use it for, I think he said for uh, military uses it for ballistic tests. So I guess they test explosives on um, cadavers to see what kind of effect it has on the human body. Just kind of crazy. I don't know if they really do that, but like who would donate their body for that? And then... So then, we cut to an, um, another scene, another location, we're outside now, and we're introduced to six teenagers. Now there's a lot of characters in this movie, um, so it might be kind of hard to keep track of, but we'll try our best. Um, but like I said, these three are the most important, plus one more, which you'll meet later. But, yeah, these teenagers are all, like, uh, they're mostly punk rock inspired like in terms of their clothing and all that stuff and they're listening to punk music too so it's a pretty cool group of teenagers they're actually you know you don't, for once you don't want to see them die you're kind of sad when you see any of them die but um anyway so this is chuck which i will probably call tom cruise because he reminds me of tom cruise for some reason and then you see this girl casey um, and I'll probably call her Punky Brewster, because of course she looks like Punky Brewster, and Chuck is always hitting on Casey, and she's always like rejecting his advances. And then we have Scuzz, and he's a pretty cool looking, uh, punk dude. He has a mohawk, a cool jacket and stuff. This is Trash. She is, um, definitely a punk, kind of like a goth, maybe even an emo bit. She has a unique red uh, short hairstyle, which is obviously a wig. Um, definitely, she has a, a role to play in this movie. This is Tina, kind of, uh, she doesn't quite fit in with this group, but she's like a goody two-shoes, um, straight out of the 1950s kind of girl, and uh, she is Freddy's girlfriend. And this is Spider, uh, a cool looking guy with long hair, and he's actually, he is um, in Friday the 13th, part 5, he's the guy who dies in the outhouse, and actually, Freddy, the actor who plays Freddy, is in Friday the 13th, part 6, I almost forgot to mention, he plays Tom 
six. And Spider is almost, yeah, I would say Spider is kind of like a kind of a main character too. Um, out of the teenagers, he's the most, I guess, important, other than Freddy. So those, oh yeah, so they're and these teenagers are just, you know, walking down the street and they want to try to find a place to party. And of course they're listening to, you know, punk music as they're walking. And uh, Tina says, oh, or no, I think Casey's like, oh, why don't we ask Freddy? He always knows uh, where there's a party. And Tina's like, oh, he got a new job at this medical supply warehouse. We have to um, wait till he finishes work or whatever. And they're like, okay, let's go wait for him. So then uh, we're back at the warehouse and now they're sitting in the office. I guess they're done uh, the training for the day and Frank is just doing some paperwork and Freddy's looking at these uh, medical books and he says, what's the weirdest thing you ever saw in here? And uh, Frank is like, wow, I can tell you I've seen some pretty weird stuff. And he goes, have you ever seen the movie Night of the Living Dead? And Freddy's like, oh yeah, I saw that. Uh, the corpses come to life and eat people and fr uh, Frank explains how it's based on a true story um, and Freddy's like yeah right and he's like no it's true um, so he basically explains how um, what really happened was that there was some kind of chemical spill at some hospital and it caused the corpses in the morgue to come to life and uh, the chemical was developed by this company for the military it was supposed to be used to spray on something i don't want to say it because you know you do um but uh and then uh, the military covered it up and they contained these corpses and these canisters or whatever and they shipped it oh they're supposed to ship it somewhere but they accidentally shipped um the corpses to this medical supply warehouse somehow don't ask me how that happens and then he's like do you want to see them and phrase like no way so excited to see them he's like yeah let's go see, let's go see them they're in the basement so then we get into the basement it's this dingy dark creepy basement and uh we see the canisters here there's actually i think five of them i only drew three but and it's like there they are so uh, frank opens the lid um and you see inside i mean there's a you know protective glass over it but you see one of the corpses and uh, Frank's reaction is classic. He's like, geez, look at that wall. I, I just love the way he reacted to this. He's like, that thing was alive. Frank's like, yep, that's what they say. And before I go on, I gotta say, these two guys, Frank and Freddy, have an amazing chemistry. Um, it's really a pleasure to be old. The acting is just incredible. Um, Frank, I forget that actor's name, but he's like, you know, definitely a classically trained actor. Freddy does a good job too and as well same with Bert Leo we'll see him again later just really good chemistry um, anyway so and then what happens oh yeah so then Freddy's like hey these things don't leak do they referring to the, the canisters and Frank is like leak oh, no these things were made by the Army Corps of Engineers and then he just kind of you know hits the barrel a bit to show how tough it is but Unfortunately, that causes um, the chemical to start spewing out gas. And uh, they get blasted with the gas. And then that causes them to start coughing and they pass out. And then that um, leads to the title screen after it's like 15 minutes into the movie. And we finally see the title, The Return of the Living Dead. And then it starts playing this like really funky some creepy music it's really cool and you see the uh the face in the canister um starts to kind of liquefy and melt a little bit and then the glass cracks um and then we um the camera sort of follows the gas so here we see in the basement here and there's the canister and the fumes start going up into the ventilation system and the camera tracks it up well, and this is while the credits are playing and then it shows goes here and this is the freezer where the guy is hanging by the hooks the corpse and the gas engulfs the corpse and then he starts to jitter so obviously now he's um alive i guess or a zombie or, or what you call that but yeah it's a zombie basically 
was a really excellent intro. Um, so that really sets the scene. <laughs> so now we go to um, the scene here. It's 4 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. And you see this nice house. And this military dude um, drives in, comes home from work. And it's this guy, he's Colonel Glover. A very um, stiff looking um, Colonel no-nonsense type of guy, and that's his wife, Ethel. She's wearing some weird, weird pink, fluffy, fluffy thing. It looks like it's some kind of lingerie or something. But anyways, he comes home, and she's like, how was your day? And he was like, crap. And then she's like, oh, I made your uh, favorite food for dinner, uh, lamb chops. And he's like, I had that for lunch. So he's kind of, uh, you know, not the uh, most friendly guy in the world. But then basically, they explain it. This guy's job is to find the barrels of what the corpse is in it because the military doesn't know where they ship them to. So that's his whole task. And he's like pretty stressed out about it and he kind of has a little bit of a, a fight about it. Um, but so we'll see him much later on. So just know that this guy is, the military is actively seeking out the corpses. So now we're outside again. And this is, we're outside of the um, medical supply warehouse, and we see a car, and we see the teenagers are in the car that we were introduced to before, but now we're introduced to another one. That's name, I'm just going to call him S, because again, YouTube. And he's another cool looking punk, and he's got this chain that goes from his ear to his lip. And it's his car, he's driving the car, it's like an old school car from the, I don't know, 50s, I guess, maybe 40s, I don't know. And, um, actually the actor who plays this guy was also in Friday the 13th, part 5, so that's three actors connected to Friday the 13th. And he's the guy, he looks different, but he's the guy who, uh, remember, there's one guy who offers somebody the chocolate, and the guy didn't want it, and then he ends up getting, like, Set. He was driving an axe in his back. That's him. Unfortunately, the actor died in the 90s. I don't really know how, but... Oh, yeah, and now it's 7.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So, they're driving, listening to punk music, of course. And he's like, how come you guys only come around when you need a ride? So, he's kind of complaining, like, hey, you guys are just using me for a ride, you know? But whatever, they, um... Eventually, they arrive at the medical supply warehouse where they want to meet. They're waiting for Freddy to finish his shift. And, like, Spider, when he sees the place, he's like, what a dump. I think it's Spider. And Trash says, in a really funny voice, I like it. It's a statement. So Trash is kind of obsessed with death and dark imagery. And then, um, Scuzz says, you know, they're trying to figure out what they're going to do until... Uh, Freddy finishes his shift to kill the time, and Scuzz is like, we can go fool around in there. So there just happens to be this cemetery right next door. And Trash says, oh, let's do that. But she says it in such a funny voice, it sounds like she's being sarcastic. But that's just her way of talking, I guess. Because, she, again, she likes doing things like that. back in the warehouse and Freddy and Frank uh, wake up and they feel really sick and they look really awful they've been passed out for a while and uh, Freddy says geez I never smelled anything like that and Frank ends, ends up getting sick and he loses his lunch they don't show it but he does it behind the something but I decided to try it in there so they make their way back upstairs and, um, let's see, yeah, every, the whole place uh, smells like that chemical, like, or the gas or whatever. So, uh, Frank starts spraying lace all around to cover the smell, and he says, I guess we don't tell Bert about this, uh, it makes us look stupid or something. And then they hear a noise, like, rough, 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 like, they hear, like, dog noises, and they're like, what was that? 
they go to investigate and they see that uh, there's a dog on the floor and Freddy says what's wrong with it and it's like panting and stuff and it's kind of weird because uh, Frank should have knew what it was but anyways Freddy lifts it up and so it's like laying flat on the ground and Freddy lifts it up and he can s we see that it's one of the split dogs and so I, the other half of the dog is just um, you can see its organs and its brain that's kind of gross, but sorry for any animal lovers out there, but uh, but it's alive and it's panting, and then they freak out. They're like, what the hell? What's going on? And then um, they're like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And then Frank goes, we're going to kill it. And he kind of freaks out, but he grabs uh, there's crutches nearby, so he grabs one of the crutches, and uh, he starts whacking it. Whack, whack, whack. And then um, suddenly we hear somebody screaming and then they stop for a second and then Frank suddenly realizes what it is and he starts his reaction is amazing um, the way he screams because he you, we, you see that he realizes what it is and what exactly happened he knows it's the cadaver in the freezer so they look at the door and they see you know the door you know he's banging on it um, really hard and screaming and they're like um, you know what are we gonna do what are we gonna you know, Freddy's like, uh, you know, what is that? And then Frank goes, it's the cadaver. And uh, Freddy's like, well, what's he doing in there? And Frank goes, uh, I don't know, but he sounds sore. That's kind of funny. You have to see the way they uh, perform this stuff. So they lock it in, and um, they go into the uh, office area, and they're just, like, freaking out. They're sweating, they're panicking. What are we going to do? What's going on? Freddy's like, uh, are we going crazy? And Freddy goes, no, it's that chemical. It got over everything. And then Freddy goes, you stupid a-hole. Because it's Frank's fault that this happened. And then, uh, this is funny, Frank goes, watch your tongue, boy, if you like this job. And Freddy's like, like this job? It's like, yeah, what, this job is terrible. What are you talking about? Who cares about this uh, stupid job? Um, something humor there. So then they're trying to figure out what to do, and then Frank is like, oh, let, let's call the police. And Freddy's like, no, we, you know, we, we can't call the police, we can't have the police around here. And he's like, oh, there was a number, a phone number on the tank, why don't we call the military or whatever. And he's like, he's like you know, Frank keeps getting mad, he said, no, we can't do that, you know, you don't want the military around this place. So finally he's like, I know what we'll do. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention, um, I noticed while I was making this, that in this scene, Besides the amazing acting, um, Freddy, if you look at his hand, it's like jittering. Something I really never noticed, but a really nice touch um, adds to the anxiety and the tenseness of the situation. And then, um, and another thing I like about this movie, I just remembered, is that, you know, the characters try to, try to make the situation better, but everything they try to do just makes it worse and worse and worse and worse. Like a, anyway, yeah, it's... You'll see anyways. So, okay, Bert's like, or, uh, Frank is like, I know what we'll do. We'll call the boss. So, um, Frank kind of, uh, he sits down. He composes himself. He drinks a little bit of water. Fixes his hair a bit, you know. And he calls Bert, the boss. And, uh, he's like, Bert, we have a little problem. And then, he, you know, he has a bit of a fake smile on. And then in the background here, which is funny again, because that's uh, more than a little problem, but just perfect timing on that part. So then, we cut back to the cemetery where the teens are hanging out. It's nighttime now, and here's Trash, and she's sitting with a spider, and she says, Do you ever fantasize about being killed? So we learn that Trash has kind of like a fantasy, where she's being killed by a bunch of old dirty men, just... Um, crowding around her, pulling off her clothes, and and biting her and stuff. It's kind of a weird fantasy. She, the fantasy she has. And the spider's like, uh, okay, no, not really. So she's explaining her fantasy, and then she does this. So yeah, I censored it for the purposes of this video, but she tears off her clothes and she starts dancing on one of the. Uh, it's kind of like an altar. 
they start um, listening to this song. It's like, tonight we'll make love until we die. Those are the lyrics. I'm not going to sing it now, but, and of course all the guys are loving it. And uh, they're dancing around her and they have these road flares they're using for light. And that's uh, definitely a very classic scene. I'm not just saying that because of the nudity, but it is definitely um, a memorable scene. And the song that they use there is memorable as well. And um, she is a very fit individual indeed. So that happens. And then we cut back into the medical supply warehouse and now Bert has arrived and he's like, you did what? And he just loses his stuff on Frank. He's like, you opened the tank, what are you, you know, what are you doing, you stupid ale? I told you never to go near those damn tanks. So obviously Frank has already filled him in on what's happened. And um, they're like, well, Frank's like, well, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And, he, and uh, uh, Bert says, well, we're going to have to kill it, referring to the guy in the freezer. And they're like, well, how are we going to do that? And then he says, um, um, well, in the movie, uh, didn't you see that they destroyed the brain uh, to kill the zombies? And he's like, yeah, that's right, the brain. Yeah, that we got to kill the brain. So he, Bert gets a pickaxe and gives it to Frank. And he's like, okay. When we open the door, when he comes out, you, um, you know, jam this in his brain or whatever. And Frank is freaking out. He's like, oh, I can't do that. Uh, you know, he's definitely really sh still shook up by everything that's happened. But, um, Bert says, well, you're the one who caused this to happen, so you gotta fix it. So now, um, Freddy's job is to open the lock on the door and, um, to standing at a safe distance or what he assumes is a safe distance and he gives him the combination 22 right, 4 left 10 right and the look on Freddy's face I didn't draw it here but was amazing because you can see the anxiety and the fear in his face um, you gotta see his facial reaction on this part but anyways, Bert nods at him and he unlocks the door and then boom the cadaver just runs out bursts out and he says break find out why he's brains well i think most people know but he just bursts out of the door and he goes straight for bert he just runs past frank and then uh, he tackles bert and they fall to the ground and then um that's really weird because he's new to the, this guy it was kind of weird but uh freddy and frank manage to um get him off and they hold him down and they're like oh what are we gonna do what are we gonna do and then grabs a pickaxe and there's the guy on the ground and then wham just drives right through his head and the noise that this guy makes when he does that is just horrendous it's a horrendous horrific scream um but it's still alive and then they're like the brain you gotta hit the brain and Bert says I hit the effing brain um so like what's going on so then uh Bert grabs a bone saw and starts sawing off the head figuring okay that'll stop him and then the head comes off but then boom the body stands up and it's still one well you know moving around and stuff and the head is still alive too so obviously that didn't work um and it's funny because this part is clearly um you know not a real person um and when we were kids we called this guy the rubber man because his body looked rubber on this part just a, a little sidetrack there but apparently the creators of the film referred to this guy as the yellow man because he looked yellow but anyway so he's still moving around so they end up uh, restraining him tying him up and then um Bert's like i thought you said if we destroy the brain it would die and frank says it worked in the movie and this is the best line in the freaking movie freddy's like you mean the movie lied and he said it's so freaking funny. Um, I can't even explain it, but and it's funny because uh, it's like what a movie can lie. Like no movies always tell the truth. And I guess it's a um, maybe a commentary on how in our culture we take movies too seriously or whatever. But anyway, so then um, you know they're like, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna get rid of this body? And then uh, Bert says he thinks of Ernie. So Ernie is his friend and he works at the um, mortuary across. 
across the street or somewhere in the area anyways next to the cemetery and he says he has a crematorium and they're like yeah but how are we going to get the body over there and he says give me the bone saw so their plan is to cut up the corpse and then bring it to um, Ernie's mortuary to burn it in the crematorium so the plot thickens so then 9.16pm Eastern Daylight Time so you can see the cemetery and the teens are doing their thing in the background you see um, Bert, Freddy and Frank carrying the dismembered corpse to, to the mortuary so you're introduced to Ernie and it's funny that um, so he's good friends with Bert and it's Ernie and Bert you gotta think that uh, they chose those names on purpose but anyway he's, a, he's another great actor and very uh, awesome character um, there you can see he has his pipe and he has his headphones on and we see that he's um, working on a body he's doing he's embalming it or whatever preparing it for burial or is it the funeral um, and then and he's listening to music um, so and then Bert uh, pops his head in the door and he's like hey Ernie and he doesn't hear it at first because the headphones and then comes in and Ernie pulls a gun on him uh, doesn't realize it's him and then whatever he sees who it is and then they, they, they have a little bit of small talk going on there but you can see that Bert is really anxious and he's like uh, hey, hey uh, Ernie I need you to do me a favor he's like well what is it what is it anything Bert and then um, gets Frank and Freddy to come in with these all these garbage bags and they're all like jittering and moving and Ernie's like what's in those bags what the hell is in those bags? And Bert's like, rabid weasels. So he tells him that there's weasels in the bag, and he's like, oh, someone sh sent me a shipment of weasels, we gotta get rid of them. And uh, Ernie's like, well, why don't we just, uh, you know, call animal control. And he's like, no, I can't do that, it'll ruin my business. And he's like, okay, why don't we, we'll just um, take them out back and shoot them. And he's like, I don't think that's gonna work. He's like, why not? Oh, actually, no, first thing, um, Ernie, um, it's like, can we want to burn them in your crematorium? And Ernie's like, oh, that's cruel. I'll just, we'll just shoot them. And then Bert's like, I don't think that's going to work. He's like, why not? So they have no choice but to show them. And they uh, open one of the bags. And this arm flops down on the ground. And then the arm starts to jitter. And uh, Ernie starts freaking out. And the arm grabs um, Ernie's leg. And he's freaking out. He's like, get it off, get it off, get it off. So they rip it off, and then it tears his um, pant leg, and he's like all, you know, shooken up and freaking out. So then we uh, go back to, what's this, oh, we're in the cemetery, and here is Tom Cruise, and he's hitting on uh, Bunky Brewster again, hit, 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 and she says, go choke a chicken. But then we have Tina, and she literally says, oh, fudge. Um, I have to go pick up Freddy. Um, he finished the shift or whatever. So she leaves the cemetery and goes to the medical supply warehouse, but no one's there. So, but she um, helps herself and goes inside looking for Freddy. So now we're back at the mortuary, and uh, Ernie's pretty shook up. And he says, I think you acted precipitously in cutting up the corpse. And Bert's like, well, maybe you're right, but uh, I did, so what are we going to do about it? And Ernie's like, okay, let's take care of your problem, but you owe me a big favor. So now we're in the crematorium, and that's the furnace. And they, you know, put the body in there, the pieces of the body. And um, Ernie explains that you'll turn up the heat really high to bring the heart to the bones, everything. And he says, dust to dust. And then you see a shot of Frank in the background, and he's like, some favor, I could operate that thing myself. Which, he's not just saying that. There's a reason he said that. We'll see later. Whoops. Oh, spoiler. So, they think that they've, you know, they're home free, but, like I said, everything they do makes the situation worse. So there's the uh, smokestack for the uh, crematorium. You see all the uh, ashes and smoke come up out, and it goes 
goes up into the clouds over the cemetery and causes it to start raining and it's doing like acid rain and you see lightning go and then um, you see the rain uh, starts to make the grass smoke and the water is like leaking into the ground and the camera pans down and you see this gasket and the water leaks through the gasket and goes on this zombie's foot and then the teens start to panic and run because of the acid rain they go back to the car and uh, it's not working so I think they run to the uh, crematorium not the crematorium to the medical warehouse but now we're back in the crematorium and Bert is really relieved he's like we're home free Frank we got it made and he's like let's go back to the warehouse and clean up so he's really relieved but Frank's like just give me a second to rest because him and uh, Freddy look really really sick now and Freddy says I'm really sick I feel like my head is going to bust open and then Frank uh, agrees that he's really sick too so they have no choice but to call an ambulance so Bert calls an ambulance I'm uh, not Bert um, uh, Ernie says calls an ambulance and says we have to poison men here so the ambulance are on the way. So now this is back at the medical supply warehouse. And there's Tina in the basement. And she's looking for Freddy. She sees Freddy's head near the door. So she goes down the stairs looking for Freddy. And she hears something. And she's like, who's there? And the answer to that is, boom. So we got this classic zombie known as Tarman. Man, he comes out of the shadows and says brains. So this is what was this is the corpse that was in the barrel. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to mention that Frank thought that when they opened uh, the barrel and they passed out and then they woke up, the corpse was gone. Um, and Frank thought it just evaporated when it hit the air, but it didn't. It actually got out, and there it is. And he's all really well done um, costume and the way the actor was moving and stuff was amazing and he's all slimy and greasy and he steps out and he's like brains and Tina of course is just freaking out so she runs up the steps but there's a broken step so she falls down and then she goes into this um, cabinet here and locks herself in now Tarman there's like a chain thing and a what do you call that a crank and he t and he hooks the chain into the door and he uses it to you know he's cranking the chain and then the door pops off so the zombies have the ability to think to use logic and they can talk as you can see so um, just at this moment um, the teenagers arrive and they hear Tina screaming so they go downstairs and there's S and he's like he sees the door pop off as like WTF and then he pulls this curtain and then he sees uh, the tar man there and he's like brains and then he grabs S and just crunch, just takes a bite right out of his head so uh, poor S goes down and he's dead and tar man is chomping on his brains and everyone else is freaking out so spider grabs a pink can it off his uh, tar man's head and he looks up at them and he's like more brains and then the teens freak out and they run upstairs and they close the door um, to the basement and everybody runs away but except for spider and he's like where are you guys going come help me barricade the door you stupid effers so he's definitely the brave one of the bunch so then back outside the mortuary the ambulance arrives finally and there's the two paramedic dudes and they are inspecting um, Frank and Freddy and you know to check in their pulse and their temperature and they're noticing that they have no pulse or no temperature or the temperature is room temperature and at first they're like um, they think it's the equipment so they try tr treating equipment but it still doesn't work and then um, one of them is like what do you got and the other one goes 70 Freddy says, 70 degrees, what's that? And they see room temperature. So 
so obviously human body's not supposed to be room temperature so then they uh they start you know um whispering to each other like what's going on trying to figure out what to do next or how that's possible and freddy's like what are you guys saying over there so the teenagers um end up running back out and they run back to the cemetery um because they don't know what else to do and they taking shelter in this mausoleum thingy taking shelter from the rain and then all of a sudden they hear the horrific moan one of their most horrific moans i've ever heard they're like what the hell is that and then they sit they look and then they see um the ground start to move and then this skeleton zombie just comes up out of the ground and opens his mouth and then you hear this awesome uh, rock music it's like do you want a party it's zombies start popping up out of the ground so this guy's head comes up a hand comes up this muddy girl zombie comes up so it's all these zombies popping up and of course the teens freak out and run away but I should say that uh, this skeleton zombie is so cheap looking um, because he has absolutely no meat on his bones just 100% skeleton and there's no way this thing could even move but so it kind of looks cheap but in another way that's kind of what makes it so memorable classic scene right there so then um so we're, here we have this little map here so tom cruise and punky brewster um run to back to the medical supply warehouse um spider tina and scuzz go to the mortuary and uh poor trash is just kind of too freaked out she just kind of freezes or whatever she keeps stumbling or tripping over stuff so she's still in the cemetery and then eventually um these zombies crowd around her and then they start eating her and uh it's kind of like her fantasy come to life where there's a bunch of old dirty men um killing her but she doesn't look so happy about it in reality so then um freddy is like well the et and the uh, paramedics are like well you have no pulse you have no um blood pressure your temperature is room temperature blah 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 he's like technically is like you're saying we're dead and they're like well let's not jump to conclusions here so they decide they're gonna go back to their ambulance and get more equipment or something like that so they go outside but then they hear a bunch of banging on the front door so um ernie goes to the front door with his gun and he sees spider scuzz and tina are there and they're panicking they're like you gotta help us these you know people came out of the ground and they're trying to get us and blah 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 and ernie's like are you guys crazy and he's like, no, listen, he's like, uh, Scuzz goes shot up and listen, man. And they can hear the screams of the zombies in the background. And then, so outside, there's the ambulance. And one guy goes into the front of the ambulance. And he turns the light on, which reveals a horde of zombies right here. And they run in, and they get um, this guy. And then the other driver's in the back, and he gets um, killed by another horde of zombies. And you're crunch as they bite into their skulls. Um, so then Tina goes into the, um, what do you call it, the mortuary um, embalming room where Freddy and Frank are. And she sees Freddy and she's like, oh my god, Freddy, what did they do to you? And because he's looking really terrible. And then in the meantime, um, Ernie's like, okay, this situation is getting out of control. Uh, we have to get the hell out of here. So he's gonna go outside, I guess, and tell the EMT guys, the ambulance guys, like we gotta, we gotta split, guys. But he sees um, one of them dead on the ground, and there's like this little zombie bite, you know, eating the guy's brain. And uh, I guess the zombie has like no legs and one arm or something like that. And then he sees Ernie, and he starts screaming, like all brain bits comes out of his mouth. And then um, Ernie starts firing, blam, 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 blam and he hits the little zombie but really has no effect and the little zombie chases Ernie back into the mortuary so he comes in and he's freaking out he's like oh my god they're, they're dead they're dead um, oh, we got you know we, we have to call for help so he tries using the phone and he's like dead so the phone is dead um, 
as well as the ambulance drivers. So then there's like a montage of them boarding up all the windows and doors in the mortuary. And while, of course, while cool music plays. And then we see outside um, the zombies eating the paramedics, the brains. And then he hears um, the ambulance dispatch place try to radio the ambulance drivers. So the zombie picks up the radio thing and he's like, send more paramedics. So obviously, like I said, they can talk and he's obviously trying to set a trap. He wants more paramedics to come so they can eat more brains. So then back in the mortuary, uh, Spider's like, you better tell us what the hell's going on here. You know, what's wrong with our friend Freddy? And then um, Bird is like, I don't have to tell you, I don't have to tell you anything, D-Brain. And um, Scuzz is like, we think you should. And he has a switchblade. Switch, 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 switch. So um, Bird has no choice but to tell them. He's like, oh, there was some, they breathed in some chemical um, and it made them sick. He said, um, it's from the military, I think, I think it's from the military. And then, um, uh, what's his name? Bert, no, not Bert. Ernie starts to examine, um, Freddy a little bit cl more closely. And, uh, they lift him up and they lift up his shirt. And that's his back. And they see, like, this big bruise on his back. And he says, that's blood pooling. And then he starts describing, like, um, the fact that he has a headache and stiff joints and stuff like that. And he says, that's a rigor mortis setting in. So this guy's is, you know, putting the pieces together and he's like, hey man, you're dead. You're dead, you're gonna turn into one of those things. And he starts panicking. And everybody's like, no. So then outside, more paramedics arrive. You see their ambulance, the two paramedics. And all these zombies suddenly, well, they see the dead um, paramedic with his brains oozing out. And then suddenly all these zombies come out of nowhere and start, uh, well, they, they um, attack these two guys and kill them. And then, um, so and back in the mortuary, they hear like a bunch of zombies start breaking through the boarded up doors. And then they run and try to stop them from coming in. And then you have this bony female zombie, she ends up getting in a bit and biting Scuzz's head. And blood spurts out. Pretty cool effect with the blood spurting out. And then, um, so Scuzz, poor Scuzz dies. And then, uh, Bert gets his axe and cuts the, you know, the female zombie at the torso. So she's chopped in half and then they end up tying her up, um, on the examination table. And then, uh, Bert, or er, Ernie, excuse me, starts to, it's, by the way, a really cool effect, animatronic on the zombie, it looks pretty cool, um, although she has absolutely no lips, yet she talks, like, perfectly, but, um, Ernie's like, why do you eat people? And she says, not people, brains. And he's like, why? And she says, it soothes the pain of being He's like, it hurts to be dead, I guess. And she's like, I can feel myself rot. So definitely a creepy thought. So now we're back at the um, cemetery. And we see Trash. She kind of resurrects, kind of like she comes up out of the mud in a pretty cool, dramatic way. So now she's a zombie. So outside the cemetery, you see this homeless guy walking with a shopping cart. Out for a midnight stroll, I guess. And out comes zombie trash. And the homeless guy sees her and he's like, What the hell? And then she comes up out of nowhere and just looks like she bites his neck. I don't know why she would do that, but. And here, chomp. And that's it. So that guy bites the bucket. So back in the mortuary, they decide to throw or to put Freddy and Frank in the chapel area and lock them in there because they realize they're going to turn at any second. But Tina refuses to leave her boyfriend, Freddy, so she stays in there with them. Now back outside, you have these cops arrive, two police officers arrive on the scene, and they see the dead paramedics, like, what the hell? And 
then suddenly they're swarmed by zombies, 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 zombies. They're swarmed by a whole bunch of zombies, and they tried to shoot them, but there's really no effect, and they're killed pretty quickly. And then one of the zombies goes to the police radio, and he's like, send more cops. So again, setting an ambush for more delicious brains. stop all these zombies and then uh, Ernie's like how about this and he has this bottle of nitric acid now it's supposed to be like the most powerful acid or something and Bert is like well yeah but there's not enough of that so I always thought that was kind of cheap and kind of funny it's like why would why would er uh, Bert even suggest or why would Ernie even suggest using this ad acid clearly there's not enough uh, for all the zombies, but we'll see why they introduce this in a second. So then we're back in the chapel, and then Freddy basically turns, he finally turns into a zombie, and he's like, first he's calm, he's like, I know what can stop all this horrible suffering. Live brains. So he tries to eat Tina's brains, and she fights him off a little bit, and uh, everyone else hears her screams. So they come in and they start um, fighting off Freddy. And Spider uses a sledgehammer and bonks him right on the head. Um, and then, but then he grabs his leg or something like that. And then um, Ernie throws that acid in Freddy's face, which is why they introduced the acid just like a few moments ago. Perfect timing. So Freddy's like, ah. During this scuffle, you see uh, Frank get up, and he runs out the door, so he really has all this energy. So anyways, they end up getting out of there and locking Freddy inside the chapel. And they're trying to barricade the door because Freddy's get, you know, busting through the door. And during the process, uh, they drop something, a bench or a pew, onto uh, Erdi's foot and break, breaks his foot. So they abandon the idea, they're, they're like, let's just get the hell out of here, let's lock ourselves in the, um, embalming room, because there's a metal door there. So they leave, and you see, uh, Freddy bust through the chapel door, and his eyes are all melted, it's pretty gross, so he can't see a thing, and he's just going berserk, he's like, brains, brains, he's like, Tina, Tina, he's screaming for Tina. And then, um, so finally they're like, okay, we gotta get the hell out of here now. So they notice that the police car is still running, um, but it's full of, you know, there's a bunch of zombies out there. So the plan is for Spider and Bert to go out, uh, fight through the horde, get the police car, drive it up to the the door of the uh, mortuary, get um, uh, Ernie and Tina, and get the hell out of there. Because remember, Ernie can't walk well because he broke his foot. So then uh, Spider's like, okay, I'll drive. And then Bert is like, no, I'll drive. And then Spider's like, F you. I always thought that was funny how mad he got that um, uh, Ernie, or that Bert said that he was going to drive instead. And he didn't really have a good comeback except for F you. It's that whole male, um, what do you call it, alpha male thing where it's, you know, they always want to be in control. So then, um, just before they leave, uh, Ernie says to Bert, that favor you owe me, you watch your ass out there. So it was kind of a little bit of a sweet moment between all the friends. And you can kind of see in both of their eyes like they may never see each other again. So they run out, the spider and Bert run out, and they run through the zombie horde, fight through them, and they get to the cop car, and they try driving back up to the door, but there's just too many zombies in the way. So they're like, we gotta split, we'll send out. So they leave. This is one of my favorite moments too, where Tina's looking out the little slot in the door and she's like, they left us. And um, Ernie's kind of like, kind of losing, losing it a bit, but he's like, they had to. Bert will send help, I know him. And he's like, you know, very jittery and you can see the anxiety and stuff. And he, he doesn't even, looks like he's trying to convince himself. He's like, oh, oh they'll come back, they'll come back. But he kind of knows in the back of that, like, yeah, we're, we're pretty much done for. So that 
Ben Burt and Spider, um, they're driving, but they see a massive zombie horde, so they have to turn, and they end up um, driving back to the medical supply warehouse, and they run into two zombies, they hit them, and they go flying, but they crash the car, and the car actually blows while they get out, and they go into the warehouse, and the car ends up blowing up, so that's not an option anymore. So now back at the mortuary, we see Ernie and Tina lock themselves, or they go up into this attic, this crawl space, um, and then underneath you see Freddy, um, finally busts through the door of the embalming room, and he's like, Tina, so he's like, you know, I'm still looking for Tina, even though he can't see, and then here we see, uh, poor Frank, he goes into the, um, em uh, what do you call that, the crematorium, I say the lighting and the makeup and the expression on his face on this part was like very well done and you feel really bad for him but he's like he goes down on his knees and he's like forgive me and he takes off his wedding ring and he puts it on the little switch for the um crematorium and then he goes inside the furnace he closes the door and here ah, he screams so he basically burned himself um i do feel bad for the guy but he didn't have much of a choice. So then we see there's a whole bunch of cop cars arrive outside. They get swarmed by all the zombies. Zombie, 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 zombie. And there's a police helicopter, you know, examining the whole thing. And then uh, back in the attic, we have, this is another amazing scene, but we have um, Ernie and Tina. And they can hear um, Freddy uh, down, like, underneath them. And he's like trying to find him and you can hear Freddy say I know you're there because I can smell your brains and Ernie kind of realizes that the situation is hopeless and he's you know slowly raising his gun up to Tina because he wants to basically he's gonna put both of them out of their misery or at least he's thinking I might have to do this because there's there's no hope you know I can't let this zombie come in here and eat us so very tense situation, but he doesn't do it just yet. Or does he do it at all? We'll see. So now, now back in the warehouse, um, so they meet up with Bunky Brewster and um, Tom Cruise, and then they're like, okay, we gotta get to a phone. So they open the door to the basement, and the tar man comes out, and uh, Birds gets a baseball bat, and whack, just his head comes off. That was a very memorable scene. I always remember that scene as a kid because I'm like, I have to admit, this movie terrified me as a kid. But when I saw that, I'm like, yeah, I'd like, take that, you zombies. You're nothing to be scared of, you know? So they go into the basement and they end up calling the police, which they somehow get patched through to um, one of the chief police guys who's outside. Uh, there's a barricade somewhere nearby. And then he's like, what the hell is going on there? But then, uh, you know, another horde of zombies comes and eats all the cops. And you see, again, you see um, Trash, but she, you know, she bites this cop's head. But she just has, like, a massive jaw on this part for some reason. So now, uh, Bert's like, okay, now we have no choice. I have to call the number on this tank. Maybe the army can help us. So he calls the army. And he eventually gets patched through to remember this colonel guy at the beginning or near the beginning and um he finally gets the call he's been waiting for and uh so uh bert's telling him the whole story and he's like yes yes i see what happened next and now what happened and then what happened and he's writing down all the specifics it's good the smr parody or uh, role play video right there but anyway so then the guy's like, okay, don't worry about it. We have a contingency plan for this. You just hang tight. So he ends up calling someone else, and he's like, the eggs have hatched. So they enact the contingency plan. So they radio this guy, um, some soldier or something, in this some kind of cannon tank thing that's a few miles away or whatever. And they're like, they give him the coordinates. And he's like, yes, sir. And then you see the cannon lift up. And then, bam. So there they are, Bert, Spider, uh, Tom Cruise, and Bunky Brewster, and you hear, and Bert goes, listen, do you hear anything? And then you have a shot of Freddy busting through um, the attic door, and then it freeze frames, and he's like, Tina, and you still hear, this is a shot of the zombies looking up 
basically their contingency plan was to destroy the city. So unfortunately nobody survives. Which kinda sucks, but but then what happens is all the ash and smoke and stuff from the bomb goes up into the atmosphere and then it starts to rain on another cemetery. Which of course causes the dead to rise again. So you see another it's basically repeat footage of that skeleton zombie popping out of the ground. And it says the same song, Do you want to party? And that's how it ends. As you can see, the end. So yeah, this concludes an amazing, amazing uh, zombie movie. Very original because I believe this is the movie that um, introduced the concept of zombies eating brains. Uh, I don't think there's a came from anywhere else but this movie but I could be wrong it's also original because the zombies um you basically can't really kill them unless you burn them or but that causes other problems like you know destroying their brain doesn't do anything and the zombies are pretty smart and they can run and they can uh they can you know use some some form of logic so definitely very original and the characters are amazing the actors are amazing you actually care about the characters like it's actually a real bummer when you see the characters die and the characters feel very real you know like they say most of them do anyways um the dialogue seems relatively realistic compared to other movies although it's not supposed to be you know it's not supposed to be a serious 100 percent serious movie there's definitely comedy in there but yet it still feels more real than zombie movies that are supposed to be realistic So definitely, definitely, definitely check this movie out. I highly recommend it. The only negative thing I can really say is how it ends. Um, because there were quite a few surviving characters. I mean, okay, Bird and Tina were pretty much screwed because Freddy was there. I mean, I'm sure they could have fought their way around him, maybe. You know, he's blind after all. But you still had Bird, to Spider, uh, Tom Cruise, and uh, Bunky Brewster were still alive, so... You know, it's kind of a shame that they died like that. Like, they still had some fight left in them, I think, right? But it seems like they had a longer script, but they just ran out of money. They're like, okay, screw it. Let's just uh, end the movie here. I don't know, probably not. But, but still a fantastic movie. And I think now I'm going to say that this is officially my favorite zombie movie of all time. And maybe in my top three favorite horror movies of all time. Absolutely, for sure. And the music is great, too. I've said that before, but I gotta say it again, the music is fantastic, so definitely check this out. With that said, um, thank you for joining me for this review. Thank you for joining me this Halloween. I hope you had a good Halloween. I hope you had a good October. Um, and like I said, this will 